I have two o'clock guys, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. And the only thing we have is EHP 81, which is technology usage, which is Dennis wanted me to put on here, so I will let her guide this. Sounds good. Dr. Grass, did you want to start with anything first? Or? No, you go for it. Okay, so this really became on my radar because it was posted on social media that Kansas City School District had a cell phone policy and I felt like there was a lack of understanding of our current policy so I had sent that on a board update on a Friday of what our current expectations are for cell phones but then in, in your packet here that's paper clipped you have our current policy our, that's our student and handbook language that says page 75 and the back is 76 so that top scratched out at the top doesn't apply if you look in the middle of it cell phones you can see the expectations for elementary middle school and then high school on the back the next document is board policy so on our parent and student handbook page 75 in parentheses it says board policy EHB AP it references our board policy but then if you look at our board policy it doesn't say anything about cell phone usage for students and I think that's a problem so we previously had something because I recall this when I was at Lafayette in 2018 and we talked with our students that this was board policy and we were putting in a no cell phone policy during classes um, but somehow it's been updated or that language is removed now so I just feel like we need something in board policy to really back up our parent and student handbook. So the last page on there is some possible wording that we could add to board policy that would support the parent and student handbook language. And it is a little bit vague that language is but I think that would cover us at least to have something from the board to be able to be more specific in our parent student handbook I think we all know cell phones can be pretty distracting in the classroom and we need something from the board to um, show support with this which I think all of you are willing to do so you're wanting so that's to what I was this say. last page right here yes or, I mean, it doesn't have to be that exactly. What you have here is an administrative procedure. Okay. Procedures are not are approved by the board. They don't have to be approved by the board, but we always pass them by them. So this will be in a, in a procedure, not an actual policy. Well, then maybe Unless we need to want move that to under policy. students. Maybe that's something we can move to putting underneath the students tab on policy mm -hmm. um, where it does become an official policy. Right. Yeah, it should be a policy in this referring to this procedure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we could do that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We sure can. I think I would like it like that over just a procedure. I think so too. Well, that's why I wanted to point it out. I, I think that shows the significance of this in the classroom. So. Well, and there will be pushback from some parents obviously from students and from some teachers that think that it's okay and so by creating a policy I think we set that standard you know this is the expectation I think so too there's not a necessity to have it in there for any reason I mean you know they're in their bags or they're in the desk drawer of the teacher if an emergency situation were to occur I don't think any of us are going to hold anybody you know get them in trouble for awesome. pulling their phone out calling right. 911 uh, however, in a normal day, there's no reason for it to be here. Question. Y'all can you ensure that the teachers are actually going by the rules in the handbook? I mean, all of us know that there are times and they don't. Yeah, that's honestly, it's no different than any other expectation that we have in buildings. It's really up to the building principals to hold people accountable. When I was a principal at Lafayette, I, I did memos. Um, I had meetings with teachers. I usually would do one conversation, um, document that, and then if we have repeat 
I would document that and send it to HR. So we can talk with our administrators about the importance of this issue, though, for sure. So with this, uh, would you suggest that uh, this in the procedure, you leave a uh, opportunity for teachers to allow students to use cell phones? It, it does. It says that if you read the middle school and the, in the high school, it talks about um, teacher discretion. Oh. Is there any advantage to uh, having the cell phone out at all? throughout the day with considerably I don't state-of-the-art computers. I, mean, I don't think so. Um, there are times when a student doesn't have their laptop, it's not charged, and a teacher may be doing a Quizlet or a Kahoot, and rather than have them not participate, they may grant them permission to be on their cell phone so that they're engaged with instruction. But not just, there's an extra 10 minutes, I'll let you guys on your phone kind of thing. Shouldn't be. How, how long until they figure Ideally, out the loophole and they, they quit charging well. their computer? My, my <laughs> question is, what happens Sorry. to that emergency child who has to have it? Or whose parents have come in and requested it? Does, so is that a way that they can go through administration or something like that? I, I Nothing is coming to me right offhand. I was going to say there's been an injury or their families uh, uh, have <coughs> trouble. Uh, the parent needs to get a hold of them right Can't away. They, but we still have an office at the school. Like, I mean, in the past, there were no phones in schools, and we were still able to get a message to the kids in the room. Oh, I, I get that. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But I think it's reassuring to a parent who feels the necessity, if an emergency does arise, sometimes it takes long to get through the school's phone to to get a hold of someone. They're out of the office or it goes to voicemail. Yeah. Um, only because I've had that happen to me. So there's email, but I do understand from the parents' point of view, there, if things are going on at home with a relative or something like that, there's the possibility of an emergency use. I know what the problem so. is, is that if you open it up, okay, well then I've got kids in school, I'm going to want to reach my kids too. I mm -hmm. mean, where do you draw the line? And it at? sends a message to the other kids, well they get to have their phone, so yeah. why can't I have my phone? It's a very fine line. It, it is a fine line. Because there'll be those who will say, it, it doesn't is. matter what the reason is, my kid needs to have the phone. I think yeah. if there's but an emergency, maybe alert the school at the beginning of the day. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. If they can come to the school and say, hey, these circumstances are going on at home, it, can, is it possible to and keep we, we you in line yeah. so that if I call, I can get to my child? Right. So the child doesn't yeah. have to worry about like that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. comes to the school and says, hey, this is what's happening. Yeah, that's yeah. helpful. I need to yeah. Did you have a comment, Marcus? Yeah, uh, just, just because I think it's highly relevant to this actual conversation, not like a follow-up interview, for example. Um, my editor, who's a little blonde mother, pointed out when, I, when we found out about what was on this agenda, that LeBlanc this year has implemented a practice whereby when students come into the classroom, they take out all their phones out of their bags or pockets or whatever, put them into a bucket. Mm -hmm. And the, the devices stay in the bucket for the duration of the class. Um, and then if an emergency call occurs, obviously they're going to hear the phone ring in the bucket, you know, or wherever it's being put, you know. And then that, then that can be responded to. I like that idea because okay, the problem is, is that there will be kids who aren't going to give up their phones and then their parents are going to say, you're not going to take my kid's phone, I pay for that. Or if the class leaves the classroom and someone steals a phone out of that. Yep. Or I'm not going to put my phone in there with all the other germs. Yep. And then they, they, they just need to put them away. Or somebody just keeps texting your phone sitting right. in the corner dinging all through yep. the classroom, which is still a distraction. Yep. So, I agree. Yeah. Even though I like that idea. Mm -hmm. But I've and seen that, that where it works well. And some teachers do that here. Yeah. Uh, but my wife does that. She bought it out of her own pocket. She bought case. some big charging station where they can plug their phones in and let them charge throughout the class. But she still had to send several That's kids cool. to the classroom because her classroom policy is no cell phones. And they fight her on that. But mm -hmm. she just says, That's my policy. You sign. And they, she makes them sign a contract mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And go take it to the office. I'm not going to fight with you about it. And that, this would really back our teachers. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. So.
And but every classroom, we spent a lot of money just not too long ago for making sure there was a phone in every room. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. someone can reach that classroom yeah. at any time. So if it truly is an emergency. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there's certainly no excuse for a parent to say I couldn't get a hold of somebody. But can you then put that also in that policy that if an emergency arises, the, to make sure that the office is aware of that? Somehow I think we can put that in the handbook. Yeah. yeah, in the handbook is what I'm getting mm -hmm. at. Sure. These are the procedures in emergency circumstances to follow yeah. so your child doesn't have to have that cell phone in the classroom. It's on the parent then, not the child, and technically not the teacher. Yeah. But other issues because they are, become the police. Are AirPods. Agreed. A lot of problems with those. Yeah. Kids are constantly want to set listen to music all day or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, smart watches, it connects to their phones. It's no different than having a cell phone attached to your arm. Yeah. Uh, those are certainly all things that would have to be taken into consideration. Everyone's a distraction from academics. So this just mentions cell phone, music device, gaming device, or other electronic device during the instructional period. And that includes AirPods in my mind. It, but in parentheses, it could simply just say such as AirPods. Yeah, AirPods, I mentioned earbuds. Smart watches. Because in your mind, it says that. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah. <laughs> Leave the gray area, they will find the gray area. Yeah, we'll find the gray area. Yeah. That's not a problem. Yeah. Let me ask, uh, during an instructional period, um, so say the teacher is uh, instructing for 20 minutes out of the, what, 50 minutes or so, 30 minutes. The rest of that time, they can use phones or is it? It's really up to the teacher. So, you know, Myself as a teacher, I didn't really like that. I would play Keijo over the radio as for the whole class because I knew it was, a, it was clean. And, and that way, if there was an announcement over the speaker and there was something important going on, that everybody could hear it. Um, but some teachers do allow. If they, they've taught for 25 minutes and they have the remaining class time to work on their homework assignment and get started, some kids do better with having music on and and that may keep them from distracting another kid you know quite honestly um, so you think that I think it needs to be teacher discretion okay. um, the, there's the problem is that there are a lot of teachers who are against the cell phone policy and so their discretion will be they're fine in my class so now we still have 50 50 but it shouldn't be during instruction mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I understand the teacher may be teaching, that's instructional time, and it may seem like instructional time when the student's working on an assignment, but if that's independent work time, mm -hmm. I think there's a difference between that and just kids on their cell phones in the middle of the class. Not paying attention right. to the instruction. And right. Yeah. Yeah. That, you just, I just, to me, that's a blurred line, you know? I know, I just, um, I think it's easier just not. Yeah. I would, you know, would it be, <clears throat> this is just a question, would, would it be easier to say just no cell phones unless that specific teacher allows it? Well, that's kind of what we do have in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the problem is that so many yeah. teachers But then what happens them. when you have that student who can't engage in the kahoot for the day because they don't have their laptop? Yeah. Well, that's a natural consequence of not having it together. Is that bad? Well, it is when you have kids who have challenging backgrounds, come from poverty. Right. Can they pair up with another kid, yeah. just look over their shoulder to share a laptop kind of thing? I mean, Could. Not... It just wouldn't be the same experience for them. I mean, as much money as we've spent lately, how hard is it to put an extra laptop in each room? Well, they have them. <laughs> At this point. Uh, they have them in the buildings, and they do loaners. Sure. Sometimes when kids don't have them, but then sometimes that learner can become the, the third device, the, the fourth device, and then mm -hmm. you have a problem. So. Well, the, the, I think the issue with implementing anything new is that as soon as you start blurring lines and you don't make it very clear and precise on what the rules are, it just never works. It's on, I mean, I, it works that way in my house, you know, when I set <laughs> rules for my own kids. Right. Uh, yeah. If you, if you set it very black and white, 
here's the rule, here's the consequence for breaking the rule. It seems like everybody does really well with that. If it's like, here's the rule, except for the, on Tuesdays and maybe if it's sunny and if I fish, you know, yep. you might as well not even I get it. I think that a big thing um, are consequences. I mean, mm -hmm. that is what I think that the teachers will struggle with because it's easier to just ignore it over spending extra time and energy arguing by phone. And that's what they're going to have to go through. I mean, consequences have to be implemented or there's not going to be any change. And what's the consequence, oh, I mean, for, I was what's the consequence for the teacher that they don't implement the policy? It's usually a conversation with the principal first. You start with that, and then typically it's uh, a memo, a documented, and then you just kind of follow the ladder of consequences. This whole thing kind of sucks. So it's almost essentially insubordination at that point. It is. And we've had that happen here. I've had to address that. Hopefully anybody that would argue against this will do what I did before I got here and do a search for basically the cell phone, I can't remember the exact wordage I used, but cell phones in schools, you know. There is just a million things you can read and not one of them says anything good about cell phones in the schools. Yeah. The research this. shows even just having it out, mm -hmm. not even looking at it, but having it out distracts us. I mean, it's a drug to these kids. I'm not going to lie to you. Even as an adult, it's going off and going off, and it's taking everything in my power to not just reach in and look, you know? I mean, and just imagine as a kid. Mm -hmm. They don't have that same self-control. I barely do. <laughs> <laughs> I purposely put mine away today because after I read all that, I thought, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't leave it out so. on air. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm on board with that as well. I just feel for that one kid in the classroom who feels left out or um, isn't as engaged. And I'm, I'm happy. If I'm the teacher, I'm happy that kid came to school that day. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's a, that's a tough balance. But that could be like a teacher call, too. I mean, couldn't we leave? That's what we have now. But that's what Phil's saying. That's that's gray area. Yeah. You know. I mean, there are IEPs that specifically allow a kid to put on headphones in class. I mean, if that is something that really is a distraction from their ability to learn, that's an IEP, and, and they have that. There are IEPs mm -hmm. for a variety of things that kids have to deal with every day. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's truly an issue, then I certainly anticipate seeing some IEPs come down the line for that specific reason. But. Uh, those need to be documented problems. That's not just something, that's just not me saying, I just do better with music. Well, what happens when you get a job and they decide they're not going to play music and, you know, that's, it doesn't work like that. We have to be teaching our kids and instilling in our kids for the long term, not just for the four years we have in high school, you know, or obviously for the eight or nine years that we have through the entire process, or nine years, 13 years in many cases with the, with the kindergarten. Uh, but it's just, you know, I think it's important that we we look at it as we're setting them up for a, a better future. Um, that's why we're developing Hilliards. That's why we're trying to work with Missouri Western and other colleges to try to, you know, get some streamlined things. It's because we're, we're trying to create better citizens for the long term, not just for our schools immediately. And that requires a commitment on our parts that you know, we really haven't done up until now, you know, other than a pretty vague thing that when I originally called you about this a couple weeks ago, the conversation came from a problem uh, that I heard about, uh, not my wife, through another teacher, uh, and they wanted to know, do we have a policy in place? And I went looking for it. And I called Gabe, and Gabe wasn't sure where it was. Yeah. Gabe connected me with you, and we found it, and it wasn't even under the technology part of our handbook. Um, so it was... It was buried. We had to go searching for it. So uh, I think this is really relevant right now. There's a lot of districts doing it. I think I read up to upwards of 70-some percent 
districts all across America are implementing a no cell phone policy. Yeah. So we're not a minority here by, by jumping on board and doing it. That's what I was going to ask. What are other districts mm -hmm. doing and how does that work? Mm -hmm. I haven't done the research on it, so. It'll blow your mind and start looking it up. Yeah, I was going to say, not at all. Yeah, they're retreating from the um, usage at all. I do believe that they are different. The key will be um, um, unless, as it's mentioning on the um, high school expectations, mm -hmm. unless part of the instructional program. Mm -hmm. Yes, as long as it's a part of the instructional and not just the chill time. Yeah. I think that a lot of this kind of lies on the teacher and what they think is appropriate, mm -hmm. and then in forcing these and the consequences. Yeah. And it does say that in there, so that kind of backs um, that gray area for the kid who doesn't have a computer that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just see kids leaving their computers so that they can have their phones. Kids come to school every day without computers for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, kids get dropped off with no backpack. Um, I mean, they're going to be looking for the loopholes to be able to use that phone. I mean, but then that would be on the teacher if it says it has to be part of the right. instructional program. Sure. That's back mm -hmm. on the teacher. Right. And then the administrator to hold the teacher accountable. Right. But if we got to a point where we thought that was an issue and we needed to go, we're done. That's what I was going to say. And maybe we will. Maybe it'll be there. I guess the part of that, later. Yeah. Part that, that concerns me is like when you say things like, you know, some of the students have challenges and you're just glad that student came mm -hmm. to school that day um, I, I would hate to cut off a section of our population mm -hmm. uh, because of the rule that would make maybe most of the students better but there's a segment of the population that would be left out and I guess that part concerns me how, how would they be left the out if they all get a computer every one of them well for, for a variety of reasons you know, students don't come to class with their equipment. So I guess the concerning part is, is that whether it's their fault or a parent's fault, or maybe they didn't stay home the night before mm -hmm. because of their home project, sure. it concerns me that what type of, are we alienating uh, or leaving out a group of kids, a group of students that we need to be trying to encourage. I think that this leaves a little bit of room for the teachers in order to um, address those kids' individual needs on like a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, if it's a kid who's just always leaving it and you know that it's on purpose, okay, well, that's a different story over a child who has a rougher home life and you as a teacher always know I, mean, I know the kids in my programs I always know the kids who have a rougher home life and need a little bit extra grace you know what I'm saying so um, I think that this is at least a good start by acknowledging it and um, and forcing it and then as you mentioned if it still is like a big issue well, then I guess we're going to join all these 70% of schools who are already going this angle. Yeah, I mean, if you, to me, if a kid can remember to bring their cell phone, they can remember to bring their computer, you know. And that's maybe being harsh. And I'm not trying to be because I was one of those poor kids. I mean, you guys were too. Uh, but at the same time, if I knew my only electronic device that I was going to use all day was that computer, the computer would become my priority, not my cell phone. That's just my I know, that's logical I know thinking, but as an adult, but that's logical thinking. Yeah. Only as a kid, I'm gonna choose what I'm able to use always. Mm -hmm. Which I'm is the problem. Them. They're using them always. <laughs> 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 and that's what they're going to choose every time. If you if you give them the choice, like if I leave my computer, I can use my phone, they're going to leave their computer. Only yeah. I've had kids in my programs whose parents have took their computers, they pawned their computers, they, the bag was in the car and the car was repossessed overnight and they no longer have a computer. I mean, 
it's lots of reasons why, and it's not only like um, like a neglect kind of thing. And so but that's what concerns me. Those kids. So and there again, we do have loaner computers available, and we certainly would not leave them in the dark. They came to us and said, "Here's what happened. Mom's car got repossessed, and my computer was in it. I think we'd figure out a way to get them a computer. You know, we're not going to leave them." If they say it. If they're even, if and that's what I was going to say too, they might be too embarrassed to mention sure. what's going on at home. I just. But there again, that's on the teacher. If the, yeah. te the teacher sees that they don't have their computer multiple days, they need to right. be digging in and saying, what's going on? You know, we're, what's happening with this? How do we make this work? And then if there's a problem, we can bring it to the appropriate staff to make sure that we get our IT people on it. Um, we always have extra computers. You know, we can always get them, get them something to use. So how are you going to run that as a policy? <laughs> uh, that's what this language is here. Right, I read that. So yeah. are you going to add anything to that, take anything out of that? Strictly up to the teacher to determine? Well, up on here, on the mm -hmm. parent and student handbook, it talks about, and I mean, Student's everything discretion. is out of sight mm -hmm. unless directed by a teacher as part of the instructional program. So we're comfortable with what it says already? I, are we just just talking talking enforcement? I feel like we have an issue of enforcement, not right. of implementation of a policy. Mm -hmm. That was my thing. I think that the problem really is not too much on the kids. Kids are only able to do what you allow them to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. So would you, and this is just, I guess, a common suggestion. Um, we have a phone in every classroom, correct? Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming at some point a letter would go out to the parents informing them of. Well, they know this because they sign off on the parents' student handbook every. Okay. Every school year. So they can do the to go out to. No, although because I saw that language, yeah. um, Eileen, she did send something out to all of our staff, to all of our families. To that's that's what I was going to say. Maybe um, uh, just like a refresher. To the staff, she just did that last okay. Tuesday. Okay, good. Well, yeah, and I, I mean, that I, I guess if we thought it was necessary, if there's any more information that goes out, maybe it would be a good idea to include the fact that we do have a phone in each classroom. And um, we could add that to the parent student handbook. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't think that's because a lot of people may not know that only it just eliminates one excuse. Yeah. So you well, can get a hold of them if you have to. I think right. they know that. Well, it's the same problem we had early on with the board. You know, we were had, we were seeing problems that were my door that won't shut, and they were mm -hmm. they were emailing us to get yeah. them fixed. It creates again the chain of command properly to where yeah. if a parent has a problem, needs to get hold of the kid, they need to call the office because now the office is aware of the same problem, yeah. and we can make sure we keep people involved mm -hmm. that should be. If they just text the kid. Well, none of us know what's going yeah, on. That happens a lot. And I won't lie. I mean, as a parent, I have texted my kids in school and asked, where did you put the remote? I mean, up until I was really on the board and more informed, I never really paid a lot of attention. Or I'm just like, it's only a little text. Okay, but it's more than that. It's a text over to my kid times 18 others whose moms are also asking a question as their kids are in class. And so, I mean, as you know better, you do better. And so um, after the teachers are more um, inclined to enforce these rules, maybe the parents will also fall in line too and leave their kids alone. And my phone just went off, and I'm still. <laughs> so I Good job. Good job. I think the real key there is that is that line as part of the instructional mm -hmm. program. Right. That that doesn't mean that we again we use it as a carrot like you more know, free time. You more did, free you time. You did good, yeah. and you can just get on your phone anytime you want. You know, because they again it won't take long before the lines are blurred again. Yeah. So this is what we have in place right now. This is the, the parent and student handbook that everyone has signed off on for this right. year. 
but I, you know, my wife, she when she put that in place in her classroom, uh, you know, she had some pushback on the cell phone part of her policy, and that was, and like I said, another teacher is the one that brought it onto my radar, and then when I asked her about it, she was telling me she got some pushback too, and I said, well, isn't it in our handbook now? Because yeah. So there again, I think there's, it's it's kind of buried down in there. Now we've brought light to it. Mm -hmm. We can create a policy that really supports the teachers yes. because our whole goal here is to increase our academics you know we our numbers are down and we need them up and the only There's way we no can, time to play on your phones anyway we, we have got to be focused when we're in those classes they're in there what 40 minutes 45 minutes at the most we get we've got to make sure that their nose to the grindstone and test scores are, are coming up and we're just keeping kids engaged uh, because and then also we're we're eliminating all the gossiping, bullying type scenarios yeah. that happen from cell phones. You know, so I, I'm all for it myself, but obviously I'm one of them. So the the uh, I guess the districts that you saw that went to the 70 percent that went with no yeah. phones is that from the start of the day to the end of the day? I didn't dig that far, David. I, like I say, it was overwhelming how much was out there uh, statistics. Yeah. And it was all major sources. It wasn't like you know some guy was sitting in his bedroom, you know, typing a blog. Yeah. And, um, I encourage everybody, any, anybody watching at home, I encourage you just do some some research on it and see if you yeah. think it's a good idea after you read what I read. And I didn't read for a long time, maybe 40 minutes, but it was long enough to go. Yeah, this conversation has to happen. You know, it's just a. And then, and then my, in my own mind, I realized I do the same thing as a parent, which is, again, why I came in here today and purposely put my phone in my pocket. Yeah. Because now, like you said, once you're aware, mm -hmm. you, you can correct. And, you know, we lead by example. And so... To me, I guess the fact that we had phones in every classroom, I mean, I would be okay with, with being somewhat strict on this one. That seals the deal for me. Yeah. It does. If they have access in every class, that parent can get through if there's a need for it. Um, yeah. And if they try to call and they can't, then there's another problem. If I, where's our secretaries at? Why are we not manning the phones? Mm -hmm. That's a very vital part. Then you go to the school. Did you have a comment, Marcus? Yeah, to cl clarify that, um, the phones that are in the classrooms right now, do, do, are parents able to directly dial those phones, or do they call the school and they get, they get routed to that? They get routed. No, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that would be terribly distracting all day yeah, in yeah. a classroom, too. Yeah. And in all honesty, I don't even know where my kids are at a given time, really, so. We can't have what Tanya calling that phone saying, tell me where the remote is. I, I really did that once. I love that. I, I'm not afraid to admit it. Let me on speak before. <laughs> <laughs> well, the remote is lost. That's serious. That is pretty serious. And I was off, too, so I couldn't watch Netflix. Dr. Krauss, <laughs> what are your thoughts on all this? So are we adding this wording that you have well, here? I think, doesn't this go through the process here and then it would go to the board meeting? Yeah, and I, I think today's decision needs to be made by the members that are here. Is right. this of a sufficient importance to take to the board? And if it is, you make it a board item. If not, it's done. You know, just my, my bottom line would be change is always hard. If your goal is status quo, then you do nothing. If your goal is increased student achievement, then you remove a distraction if you can. It's that simple. I think it's important enough in order to add so, and bring it to the board as a whole. Are we putting this in policy or in this procedure? I would like to put it in policy. policy. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'd be in favor. If we had, if we ended up with a problem with the teacher essentially yeah. becoming a subordinate over it, we would need the policy to back that. Yeah. So. Then it's a violation of policy. Right. And, and as you have here, this is generic enough that buildings or even in the handbook it could be given more detail mm -hmm. like here's what instructional time means here's right. you know those those kinds right. of things that don't need to be right. in a policy per se but i do think it would be important like you said you did to really just in, get every principal to find the time where they can set them down whether it be an already an assembly that's coming up or whatever and just say 
here's what we're doing and here's why we're doing it. They got word of it and they came in grumbling. At the freshmen and then the sophomores and then the juniors. But um, it was helpful because we had word policy, so I could just put it back on that. This is not me personally, although I think it's good for your learning. Um, we're going to follow word policy. So, um, and it still came with struggles. I mean, fighting that with kids and um, and parents. But I think it's it's important that we do this work. I hope parents just know that we're not doing this because we're just mean. We love their kids. We want their kids to be successful. Ultimately, that's every decision we, we make has their kids exactly. at the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. Some parents might be relieved because they may go through stuff at home because that kid's going to bring that phone. True. So it may be a relief that it is black and white, thank God. And think of how many cell phone batteries we're going to save. <laughs> <laughs> Cell phone minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so does this mean I can't BS my phone during board meetings anymore? <laughs> yes, I'm sure. not being engaged. It's not Because I'm always like, what am I missing? But if I'm always like, what am I missing? This is what I'll be missing. <laughs> so be that, this is a great teachable moment for all of us. You know. It keeps you from being present it does. Right, in whatever you're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why the mind's It's hard. I'm sure. I'm not gonna lie, it's it's hard. Because I missed about eight calls and a few messages. And I just want to announce on camera, I'm not calling anybody back. Those have, <laughs> they'll just have to cycle now to get that. <laughs> they may be watching this. <laughs> But on a side note, Latanya, it was good to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad I was present. <laughs> so that yes. actually you and I can work together to figure out where we want to put this one in at, and mm -hmm. I'll get it put in, and then I'll bring it to the board. Just on a side note, would you say it's enjoying the teachers in your favorite dish? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you, well, we have this in place, and we would, would take the phone, and the parents had to come pick it up. It became a nuisance for the parents, which mm -hmm. was helpful, um, so that the kid wouldn't have it yeah. in class. I remember my oldest, I had to pick hers up, and I had no time to do it, and it was there for like three days, and when I finally went, I said, listen, don't you ever do anything to make me have to come to this school and get your phone again. And she never did. Yeah. So maybe we need to send you to each school. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll also tell you we had we've had a parent come in, get the phone from an administrator and then give it right to the kid. Yeah. Uh, That's a reality too. So yeah, we'll, be, we'll get to know that parent really well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, we, are we already <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Ashley. So thank you thank for you. all you did to put this together. Yep. We adjourned. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um,